All right, what do we have here? I ordered something used. Now I'm going to unbox it. I mean, I don't know why I'm acting like it's a mystery you're watching on YouTube. You already saw the title. The canyons. Canyon. There's only one of them. A singular canyon from Electro Harmonics. Ordered this off of Reverb, I think. I think that's where I got it from. It looks like it's never been opened. Maybe I bought this new? I can't remember. Comes with a big old wall wart. It's nice to have in emergencies. Sticker for tongue sole. Vibration tested, world class reliability and performance electron tubes. All right. It's a cool sticker, I guess. I mean, I don't need that. I got my own power supplies. Maybe this was open. There's this is like taped closed. Let's get the uh, the old left-handed scissors in here. How did they? I don't want to cut if I don't have to. But where is the seam? Oh, I've ripped it. Way to go, Ryan. There goes the used value on this pedal. Can't sell this with a ripped bag. Do I dare open the instructions? Warranty and registration. Has anyone ever registered these things? Next time I talk to an electroharmonics rep, I'm going to ask them how many registration cards they actually get for pedals. I don't think I've ever registered a product in my entire life. Not through the mail. So it looks like there's all kinds of good information in here. A lot of stuff these days doesn't come with manuals. Like this looks like it has everything. For what I understand, this is a pretty involved little four knob pedal. So that'll probably come in handy later. I'm gonna uh, refocus and sit, get some cables in this. Play around with it, get some first impressions. All right, all set up, ready to go. Uh, I suppose I should probably check the level on my mic on my amp real quick. I'm running a, uh, a Princeton reverb over here, playing guitar with the, uh, the Titan. <laughs> a pretty good level let's uh let's turn this thing on all the controls at noon we're on what we'll call the first setting which is echo I mean, that, that is an echo. FX level, delay, that must be the time. It doesn't take off like spaceship sounds. Oh, that's crazy. I like that. Really long delay time on this. I wonder if some of the analog sounding presets on it will let me do spaceship sounds. For the time being, let's turn that down. I think I'm changing the divide on there, and then I hold it. No? 
There we go. It's interesting. It turns off to do the tap. But it's always there, ready to go. I mean, hopefully you don't have to do any quick turning on and turning off with it. I wonder if there's a way to set trails on it, because I like to use trails every now and then, especially on a full featured thing like this. Let's move over to mod. Some weird sounds with this thing. Sounds pretty nice. Multi. Whoa, that was crazy. Is that? That's really interesting. I wonder if there's, I know there's a way to get into extra settings on this and I'm not going to do that now, but I wonder if there's crazier things you can do with that. Reverse. That actually sounds like a really nice reverse. I usually like see reverse on pedals and I try to mess with them and I can never quite get into them, but that sounds like a lot of fun. I might have to play around with that. There's a big delay time on this too. I don't know how many seconds or milliseconds it has on tap with each setting, but man, it's past noon is past where I usually use delay. So there's a lot of time on there. Let's try to ring one note out. There's something really nice and musical about that. I really like that reverse. I want to play around with that more. Uh, so now we have a DMM setting. Uh, dudes, men, and money? Is that what that stands for? Oh. <laughs> that long delay there.
That's a nice, it's, it's soft and warm like an analog delay, but it's also nice and articulate. It doesn't get too muddy too quick. I have trouble with a lot of analog delays that just get too much mud going on. I've got a, uh, a memory man with Hazard Eye on its way being shipped to me right now. So I'm going to do a shootout with the Canyon against that to compare the tone, to compare the repeats, to just compare it in general. So uh, be on the lookout for that video. Let's check out the tape delay now. Bring down the feedback up the level. <laughs> it sounds like tape. I'm getting a the box is making a clicking sound when I rotate around that level. What is that clicking sound? Interesting. I like the sounds of this thing so far. Like nothing sounds cheesy or unusable verb. So I think that's with reverb on the repeats. I really like the art. It's like a raised print on this thing. I'm sure they used, you know, the modern techniques or whatever to print it. I don't think it's screen printed with all those colors. The, uh, I'm, the UV printing. I'm betting they used UV printing on it. But it just looks like a really nice print on there. Like it's got a little bit of like a th like a 3D look to it, like um like the ink's really popping out. Just really vibrant art. I'm really a big fan of that. Interesting reverb on the back end of that. That thing can really get away from you, especially when you have the feedback knob up like a darn fool. That's an interesting sound. I'm, I'm not sure I would use that one, but that's interesting. I'm, I'm kind of glad it's there. Octave. What's this going to sound like? I think that's what OCT stands for, octave. Whoa! That is interesting. Let's dial back the mix on that. Whoa. I mean, I think we've gotten into like the more novelty side of this thing out of like the classically classically usable delay things into like 
experimental stuff. That is a trip. It gets so high pitched. I wonder if when I get into the secret tweaking settings on this, there will be a way to choose which octave is uh, is being addressed or applied to the repeats. All right, so now we're on to shim, which I assumed would be the high octave sort of thing. Is this like a shimmer delay? Interesting. It is like an octave, but like this, the modulation of it, like, goes in and out in a really cool, freaky kind of way. Kind of like 80s movie horror soundtrack. That's a trip, man. Okay. S and H, I think that's sample and hold. setting. I'm assuming feedback does nothing on this setting. So you kind of got to dial, you got to, you got to dig in with the note a little bit and it senses it and it just grabs that and repeats it forever until you give it a new note. Right now I was on an E and I slowed it down, but I think it holds the pitch. So interesting. It seems like it has a little trouble tracking every note, but I think you could do some really fun stuff with that if you're very intentional with it.
seems to hold on to the fidelity of that sample very nicely. This is a pedal that I wish had an expression jack. I'm just going to say that right now. Interesting. All right, I don't know if I might have to stand up to do the loop, the loop function. Well, there it is. Time doesn't control it in any way. How do I stop it? There's stop, there's play. Does that erase it? Yeah, that erases it, now it's recording. Now, there's a big silence on. Now there it is. So it works the exact same way my ditto does. So that's convenient, I already know how to use it. All right. It's I'm, I'm stoked about this thing as a, as a first impressions. I think a lot of the settings sound great on it, uh, especially the, the more classic kind of range from tape through to echo. I need to dive into the manual and explore getting into the, all those secret settings, doing all that fun stuff. So uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and uh, stay tuned as I explore this thing more. Like I said, I'm going to get a Memory Man with Hazari in here to compare against it. And I've got a couple other delay pedals. I'll shoot out against it. All right. Thanks for watching, guys.